Good morning and welcome to another edition of Men of the Word, a men's Bible study from Calvary Chapel Heartland right here in Fort Valley, Georgia, uh, just a couple miles west of I-75 out in the Pecan Grove. Come join us. We're back to meeting uh, inside on our Sunday services at 1030. And I would appreciate, you know, if you can make it, please come out and join us as we study God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Today we're going to finish up John chapter 1, but we're going to do it a little different. We're going to read the whole passage and then reflect on it uh, because we'll see Jesus calling out disciples at the beginning of his ministry. We see the transition from John the Baptist and his ministry to Jesus Christ and his ministry. So we'll begin in John chapter 1 and verse 35. And the word says, and the next day, John, that's John the Baptist, not the writer of this book, stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. This is the next day after John gave his testimony. So these two uh, disciples are with John and John sees Jesus and identifies him as the Lamb of God. And verse 37 says, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, seeing them following, and said, whom do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. It was now about the 10th hour, or about 4 p.m. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him, Peter, to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which translated is a stone. Now the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in whom is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. The phrase fig tree often refers to studying the scriptures and being in prayer. So when Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree, he was saying that he saw Nathanael <coughs> studying the scriptures and in prayer. In verse 49, Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Verse 50 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see the heaven open." and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And there is so much in this portion of Scripture, but because we have just a short time in our Bible study, I want to focus us on some disciples being called, and that each of them, as we've seen in this passage, were called in a different manner. This is important because Jesus calls each of us at different stages of our lives. He calls us in different circumstances and places in our lives. And he calls us to follow him. 
And each of us comes to the decision to follow him differently as God calls us and the Holy Spirit confirms, causing us to believe in him as our Lord and Savior. We also see that as believers are made, as these disciples were made, they in turn reached out to others, those they care about, those they knew. They reached out to others and pointed them to Jesus Christ. The first pair, all they heard was John the Baptist proclaim the Lamb of God. And when they heard the preacher say those words, they turned and they followed Jesus. One of them was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And the first thought was his mind is, I gotta find Peter. So he went and he found his brother and he gave him testimony of who he had met, Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior, and he brought him to the Messiah, and Peter followed. Then Jesus found Philip. Jesus spoke directly to Philip and called him directly, and he followed. But when he followed, he went and found Nathanael to testify of the Messiah. Now, Nathanael didn't believe right away, but Philip encouraged him and said, Come and see for yourself. Then Jesus spoke to him, revealing to him who he was, and that before he came to meet Jesus, Jesus was already seeking after him. Isn't that great to know? Before we ever make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Jesus knows about us, and he is after us. He wants us to accept him. All of these men, men followed because their eyes were open, just like John the Baptist in last week's study, and they saw Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The Holy Spirit revealed to each of them who he was, and each of them came to Jesus in a different way, from a dis different testimony, or something opened their eyes or jogged their brain so that they could see that Jesus Christ is the one and only Lord and Savior, the Messiah. Some came by proclamation of the preacher, some by testimony of a friend or brother, and some by direct calling by God, and some by seeing for them for themselves. But each of these came to the same conclusion, Jesus Christ is the Lord and he is our Savior. Now, <clears throat> I love when it talks about testimony and you know, John, we read John the Baptist's testimony last week, and now we have the testimony of each of these men, how they met Jesus. And I hope that you have a testimony or a story to tell uh, that expresses to other people how you personally came to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Me, I was 13 years old. And I had a neighbor in our neighborhood. We had a lot of guys, but one guy that lived across the street from us, his father was a pastor. And he asked us if we had ever been saved. I had no idea what he, talked, what he was talking about. But his dad explained to us through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is knocking on the door of our heart, that he wants to come in and fellowship with us and live in our heart. And I accepted Jesus Christ when I was 13 years old. And I'm so thankful for the faithfulness of my friend who met Jesus and then wanted to share that with me. And then I met Jesus and I wanted to share that with others as well. And so that's kind of what God calls us, each of us to do. You don't have to be a pastor to tell people how you met Jesus. You don't have to be a pastor to tell people what Jesus means in your life. You don't have to be a pastor and you don't have to memorize tons of scripture in order to tell people your personal story of how Jesus Christ came into your life and how he changed your life and how he gave you victory. So as we finish off chapter one, we look back and we see that John has given us a very solid foundation to know that Jesus Christ came from God and that he is God. He is the creator of the world, and he came to live among us as a man, leaving behind his throne and glory to come and live on planet Earth and to be a faithful witness 
and also to pay the ultimate sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, so that we can have eternal life if we put our faith and trust and hope in him and on him. We see that many different people came to know Jesus in many different ways, and we realize that these people were not just casually following Jesus one day a week for a couple hours. They were following Jesus with everything they had. They were sold out for Jesus Christ, and they were living fully and completely for him. Don't get me wrong. They had bad days, too. They messed up, as we'll see, and made mistakes, too. <clears throat> but their purpose in life was to serve their Lord and Savior. Also realize, as we saw last week, that the religious people of the day, they didn't understand it. They didn't comprehend what was really going on to these people who had sold out to Jesus Christ. And this happens even today. And there's a saying, I don't know the author, but it goes like this. Many turn from Jesus because of a bad experience with religious people. But know this, Jesus also had a bad experience with religious people. He was killed by them. Religion will not save you. Only Jesus saves. Don't let someone else interfere with you or keep you from your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't let someone else muffle you or stifle the joy that you have and the testimony that you want to share with other people. Now is the time, as John the Baptist proclaimed, prepare the way of the Lord because he is coming soon. And you say, well, Pastor, I've heard that so many times. Generations past, people have said the exact same thing. And I'll just leave you with this. You know, in the South, oftentimes we have tornado warnings and our sirens go off and we get into the safe spot in our house. And, you know, hopefully that we don't have a tornado. And many times we'll do that. And we don't get complacent. Every time it goes off, we get to our safe place. And that's kind of how our generations have seen the coming of the Messiah. Every generation th sees things that change that give them the idea based on Scripture that Jesus is coming soon. But we need to be prepared because this might actually be the time. And the worst thing that's going to happen if you prepare for Jesus coming is that you will live right and you will live for him. Whereas if you don't, you'll be like those virgins who didn't keep their, their lamps full of oil. You won't be able to make the journey. Be ready. Be ready. Jesus is coming soon. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you give us your word that testifies, Lord, of the things that must happen before you return and that you call us home. And Lord, we look forward to that day. Lord, we look forward to that day. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to be faithful witnesses, Lord, to tell people about you, about your saving grace. Lord, how much you loved us before we even loved you. How much you sought after us even before we sought after you. And God, that you send us your Holy Spirit to confirm in us who you are. Lord, to change us from the inside out. Lord, I pray I pray, Lord, that we would be faithful witnesses for you. In Jesus' name, amen.